Uh, okay. Um, I think most people are here, so I will start. Um, so welcome to the first uh, hacker school of this uh, semester, right? Um, right. Um, so uh, my name is Huawei, right? And um, yeah, so let's start. Um, so the slides, the link to the slides um, are in the, the link to the slides is in the chat. You can, uh, you can get the slides and follow along. Um, yeah, uh, so the rec recording for this uh, workshop will be uploaded to the NUS Hackers uh, YouTube channel, um, you know, as usual, right? Uh, so if you want to look at the recording, do check it out. Uh, do check our YouTube channel, you know, um, within like a few days uh, after, uh, a few days after today. Yeah. So, um, and if you have any questions at any point, um, feel free to just uh, ask in the chat, or if you want, you can unmute yourself and ask. Okay, so um, I'm going to follow this um, screen layout uh, for the workshop, right? Um, so slides on the left, and then the uh, a terminal on the right um, so you can should be able to follow along yeah uh, so yeah so that's it so let's begin okay and doesn't want to scroll hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, if you don't already know about uh, NUS Hackers, right, um, this is Hacker School, right? Um, other events we run include uh, Friday Hacks as well as uh, Hack and Roll and Hacker Tools, right? Uh, Hacker Tools is another workshop series kind of similar to Hacker School but um, not exactly the same, right? Um, so this, workshops, this workshop originally came from Hacker Tools because... Um, you know, in Hacker Tools, we teach things like shell, and then after that, we talk about like uh, data wrangling in the CLI, uh, typically, right? And then after that, sometimes we talk about uh, CLI uh, debugging. You know, so basically, a lot of uh, things aimed at CS uh, CS students. Whereas for Hacker School, uh, traditionally we have not. Uh, we traditionally Hacker School usually talks about um, you know introduces you to some new technology or something like that. Uh, it's aimed at a more general audience, right? Not necessarily just uh, CS students. Um, uh, but uh, we don't run Hacker Tools every semester because uh, it doesn't make sense to keep running the same workshop uh, every semester, same workshops every semester. So that's why uh, usually Hacker Tools runs only in semester one. So this semester we have Hacker School only. Um, I mean, uh, and Friday Hacks, right? Uh, and so this workshop um, is now in Hacker School. Um, so do check out our, our other events, right? Um, Friday Hacks and Hack and Roll 2020. Hack and Roll, which, uh, which we had the first, we just had the 2022 run uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Okay, so what you will learn today, uh, you will learn on basically how to use uh, the shell, right? Um, bash, right? And how to create, you know, uh, shell scripts. Uh, for to automate things or to write simple programs in the shell. Um, so uh, hopefully you have managed to get um, some Unix-like environment, right? Um, more importantly, what you need is uh, Bash, right? Uh, whether whether it's in WSL or you know in like MSYS uh, or whatever. Uh, Okay, MSYS is not preferable, but it will work. It will work for today's workshop. Um, yeah, but preferably you have some Unix uh, environment, either Linux or Mac OS or BSD or uh, maybe WSL. <laughs> okay, so then what is Unix in the first place, right? Um, so Unix is a family of uh, multitasking uh, multi-user OSs, right? So what does multitasking mean? It means you can run uh, multiple programs at the same time, right? Um, and multi-user mean, meaning that, you know, multiple users can be logged in uh, at the same time, right? Um, and basically, 
Uh, it was uh, first developed at Bell Labs, right? Uh, this is a uh, uh, some lab in the United States, right? Um, and then basically we have all the BSDs uh, that basically uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, we have the first BSD, right? Uh, which was developed in uh, Berkeley, right? Um, and then after that, a lot of BSDs. The, so the entire family of BSDs came off from, um, uh, sort of branched off from the BSD, you know, the original BSD. Um, that includes like FreeBSD, uh, OpenBSD, right, NetBSD, etc., right, um, and Net uh, MacOS as well. So MacOS sort of uh, branched off from Next, which itself branched off from the original BSD. Although uh, it's not, it's not say uh, MacOS now. I mean, they has they have, they have diverged a lot, lah. But uh, it is still a BSD. Um, I won't even call it a hard, but you know, it it originated from BSD. But it has diverged a lot. Lah. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Linux, right? Uh, Linux is uh, vaguely Unix-based, right? Um, it's not, not, really, not really at all. Uh, because, you know, it, the ideas, are, the interfaces are based on Unix, but it's a totally independent uh, implementation of everything, right? Um, so, yeah, we have Linux, right? Um, and then there's a bunch of other, you know, uh, Unix-like family, uh, Unix-like OSs that, uh, you know, are more popular in the in commercial, um, commercial users like uh, Solaris, uh, HPUX, AIX, etc. Right, uh, you know, by Sun and Oracle and IBM. Right, uh, so there are those. Right, so what do all these have in common? Right, they they, I mean, back then there was no. Uh, you know, back then there was no concept of graphical interface, right? So uh, everything started off from the shell or interactive command line, right? And um, so everything was basically based off the Unix shell, right? Uh, and uh, basically, uh, Bash is uh, the an you know an evolution of um, not really evolution, but Bash is basically a refinement of what they had uh, back all the way back then in. Um, the 1970s, right? Um, and it's what is the Bash is probably the most popular shell currently, right? Um, although there are other shells. Okay, so um, so with the Unix OS, right? They had a when they designed it, they had this philosophy, which is basically um, these three things, right? Uh, your programs should uh, your programs should generally do a single thing, and do it well, right? Um, and then your programs should be able to work together. And then lastly, the programs, you know, should handle text, right? Rather, rather than binary structures, right? Uh, because it's easier to, you know, is, text is universal, right? You can, you can manipulate text and humans can read text, right? Versus binaries where you need, uh, or if you want multiple programs to work uh, or operate on the same binary, binary data, right, uh, then you need, um, yeah, you will need all the programs to, you know, understand and be, be written to understand that same uh, binary data format, right. Um, whereas text, you can have, you know, any any program that operates on plain text, right. Um, the only sort of thing that they need to have in common is like, okay, um, you know, what, maybe what, uh, what line ending character do we use, right? That's the only thing that needs to be in common. So, uh, once you have that, you can have you can use multiple programs to search, you know, ma manipulate text, search text, etc. And uh, they don't, they, none of the programs need to know about each other, right? Um, so that's the nice thing about um, that. That's how we have our Unix uh, command command line tools, right? Um, that you know allow you to do many things you can compose them together to do many complicated things right even though each tool by themselves is uh, quite simple right so shell right what is the shell the shell is a, a text interface to your computer right so um, you can do everything uh, that you can do through a graphical interface through the shell and uh, some people will argue that you can do it faster um, and of course, there's probably you can do probably you can probably do more through the shell uh, than you know through the graphical interface most of the time. Um, depends on 
uh, yeah, no, it, it probably generally yes, right? Um, depends on what exact uh depends on your operating system, but I will I will say it's even true on Windows, right? Uh, it's just that Windows has so many things uh that you can do through the graphical interface that you don't usually need to reach for the shell, right? Um, but on Linux, you know, um, a lot of things uh you you have to do through the shell, right? Um. Okay, so the shell um, is also a, somewhat a program. It, it's also a scripting language or a, and therefore a programming language, right? Um, you can write programs uh, in Bash, right? There are, there are many programs that are written in shell script, um, even large programs. And it's, to me, it's that, it, that's a bit horrifying, but um, people do write large programs in shell script, right? Um, so the common shells that uh, people use uh, are the, is the standard um, POSIX shell, right? Or SH uh, and Bash, right? Uh, so Bash is a POSIX compatible uh, shell, right? And it's probably the most compatible, uh, probably the most um, popular one, right? Then you have um, shells uh, that match certain languages like uh, C shell, right? Uh, not not like not like C shell the thing, but CSH, right? Um, so C shell is supposed to be a shell whose syntax matches the C programming language, right? Um, and then there are some other improved shells, for example, fish or Z shell, ZSH, right? Um, so, um, you know, for your personal use, you know, you can, uh, whenever, for, I'm sorry, as your interactive shell, right? Uh, what I mean by interactive shell is basically the shell that you use day on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, at the command, when you open your terminal, what shell do you uh, launch, right? Uh, for the shell that you use, right, um, you can use whatever shell that you like, right? Um, and I, I mean, even, in fact, for scripts that you use personally, right, and that you don't intend to, uh, you, you don't intend to, you know, share with other people, right? Um, you can use whatever shell uh, whatever shell script thing language you want, right? Um, but in general, if you are writing, for example, uh, a build script, right, uh, something that is meant to be used on multiple computers that you don't control, right, uh, it's good to use something that's standard, right, including like like Bash. And sometimes even Bash uh, may not be, uh, you know, standard enough, and then you have to use you have to limit yourself to POSIX only. Um, yeah, you, you have to limit yourself to POSIX shell, right? Just SH. Um, so, um, Bash itself has some extensions on top of POSIX shell, right? Um, but not all systems actually have uh, Bash, right? Sometimes you have, for example, BusyBox. Uh, uh, BusyBox is this... Um, uh, BusyBox is um, sort of out of scope, but BusyBox has a shell implementation, right? A very a minimal shell implementation implementation right um but it implements POSIX shell at least right but it won't it doesn't implement all the extensions of bash right so um yeah so um yeah so the point is that if uh, for your own shell you can use any shell uh when you're writing scripts that you intend to be used on multiple computers that you don't control you should use uh, a standard shell uh, so probably bash or sh even yeah, so personally, my shell, uh, the shell that I use is a ZSH, a Z shell, right? So what kind of benefits does Z shell have over Bash? Uh, generally, uh, better completion, right? Um, uh, yeah, better completion, and there's a lot of other features that I don't really use, uh, but I just like it because of the better completion. Um, yeah, Fish is also uh, quite popular, um, although... Uh, because uh, if I'm not wrong, it has better completion as well uh, compared to Bash, uh, and I think it has other features, uh, nice teas uh, out of the box. Yeah, so you can check it out. Okay, so what is the prompt? Right, shell prompt. So the shell prompt is basically this, right? Uh, this is the prompt. Uh, you can customize a prompt, right? Uh, we won't really go into that, but this is what greets you when you open the terminal, right? And then this is the prompt is where you enter, you know, shell commands, right? Or lines of shell code, right? Um, that's how you run uh, programs and um, 
Yeah, that's how you run your programs in the shell. Okay. So let me just note this down. Okay, I will have to fix a typo. Um, so hopefully you have uh, managed to uh, you have managed to acquire some sort of environment where you can run bash, right? Um, so let's get straight into some common commands, right? So the first command um, that I the first command is man, right? Um, man is man stands for manual, right? So um, it's good to know how to look for help, um, and therefore the first command that we introduce will be. Uh, how to look for help um, in the shell. Okay, of course, man is not uh, a command provided by the shell, right? Man is a separate uh, command uh, provided by the system, uh, on by the Linux or Unix system typically to to by, um, let you read manual pages, right? They call it manual pages of um, various applications, right? So how do you use man? Basically, you type man and then you type the whatever you want to look for the whatever documentation you want to look for. For example, I want to read the manual page for man. Right? You can do man man. Right, and then you will, it will open up a uh, you know a pager for you. So what's a pager? Basically, a pager is something you can press up and down and you'll uh, scroll right. Um, and then you can read the manual page for whatever it is you opened up. Okay, um, so that's man, right? Um, so you can look up you can look up the um, manual page for other commands as well. For example, ls, right? ls, um, which we will cover shortly. But uh, what if you want to look up the manual page for ls? You can you can do that, right? And then it will tell you exactly the options that you can use, right? Um, okay, so and then. Now, what if you um, are not sure about um, the name or, I don't know, you're not sure about the name of a manual page or for whatever reason, you can use the, uh, you can use the uh, command apropos. Um, for example, you can do apropos print, right? And then it will tell you the, it will list out the, um, it will list out the, all the manual pages whose name or um, sort of short description, right, or subject, they call this the subject. So I propose to list out the uh, all the manual pages whose uh, name, right, or subject contains whatever you key in. So for example, I want to search for, I don't know, copy. Right, and then uh, I propose will list all the um, I propose to list all of the um, manual pages that have copy in the uh, in the name or the subject, right? Um, so then you might notice here, right? Um, for each manual page, there's this number here, right? Um, so what what is this number, right? Uh, this is the uh, manual section right so if you do man man uh, it tells you here the section numbers right so um, what do each of these section numbers mean right um, the most common ones you probably look up are like two and three right system calls uh, library calls right um, and then one is for programs yeah um, so we can look up the apropos uh, um, manual page right um, and then if you for example you want to search only for programs that you can execute you can use the dash s right uh, apropos dash s and that will tell you the th that will limit the results to uh, you know commands in the uh, to, to manual pages in that section so for example if i want to search for commands that have copy in them i can do apropos section one copy right and then these are all commands that have uh, copy in the name or subject, right? Okay, um, so that's how to get help. Man, right? Using the manual pages. And then I propose to search uh, manual pages. 
right? And then we have a CD, right? Um, so in the shell, you have the idea of a current working directory, right? Uh, so typically, your prompt may or may not have uh, the working directory in it, right? So in this case, my prompt has the name of the current working directory uh, in it. So the, 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 the name of the current working directory is just p. Right. So how do I um, change uh, directories, right? Um, you can use cd, right? cd, change directory. So you just type in the path to the, uh, you know, directory that you want to change to, right? So what's the use of the working directory? Basically, all most commands uh, and most programs will do things relative to the current working directory, right? So for example, uh, the next command is ls, right? If I do ls here, th th there's no file, there are no files in this directory. Lah, so ls will print nothing. Uh, but if I do ls here and don't provide any path, right? Then it will list the files and directories in the current working directory, right? Uh, in this case, it's p, which has uh, no files and all directories, right? So if I, let's say, go to like uh, slash var and I do ls, uh, then you can see that um, I have uh, some, you know, directories here, right? Yeah. I can go back to my slash temp dash p. Okay. So you might notice that I have this uh, cd dot dot, right? Um, so what is dot dot, right? Dot dot means the parent directory, right? The parent directory of the current working directory, right? Um, you can also use dot dot after, you know, um, a full path for example i can do cd slash temp slash p slash dot dot right and this will be equivalent to cd slash temp right and then i can also do dot dot again and this will be equivalent to cd slash right and um, of course if you try and do this it will just be equivalent to slash right you see um it will be, yeah it will just be equivalent to you can't go above the root directory of course Right, um, so that is the uh, CD, right? Uh, and of course, um, there is also the single dot, right? Um, so what do you, what does a single dot mean? Dot the single dot means the current directory, right? So therefore, doing this CD CD dot slash, right? Uh, means um, yeah, means nothing, right? It, um, it's not not means nothing, but it it, it um. It just means you're not going to change any directory because you're staying in the current directory, right? Um, so you might have noticed, you know, uh, when you run commands, uh, oops, when you run commands, right? Um, you sometimes you do this thing like swing dot slash uh, something, right? Uh, what does that? Why do you use dot slash something rather than just something, right? Uh, because when you have a slash in the command, right? then a bash will not look up in the... Uh, so if you don't have a slash, then bash will actually look uh, look for a command with this name, right? In a certain set of directories, right? And th uh, this set of directories is what you may know as the path, right? P-A-T-H, path. Um, yeah. Uh, if you want to execute something in the current directory, right? Because your current directory is typically not in the path, right? So if you want to execute something in the current directory, then you need to have a slash so that bash does not um, go and search for an executable, uh, does not go and search for an executable, but it just uh, executes it, uh, executes a path, right? Whatever path you specify. So in order to do that, you need a slash in the command name and uh, therefore you will, uh, and to do that, you can use dot slash, right? So that's why, um, a lot of times when you execute something in the current directory, you will use dot slash. And then the name of the you know file in the current directory. Right. Um so that's uh C D, right? Next is L S, right? So um Okay, too long. Never mind. Um, so what does ls do? It lists files and directories in the current working directory, right? So ls, nothing here, right? Let's go to like uh, slash uh, user for ls, right? Um, so um, yeah, there we have um, 
we have some directories here, right? And um, yeah. Uh, so that's basically what you do with ls, right? You, you can list files or directories, right? Um, and these are the names of the files or, uh, or directories. Now, um, what are some flags you can specify to ls, right? The, the common flags, uh, the common flags to ls are like dash l, right? Dash l will uh, produce a list, right? Rather than a, a long list, right? Rather than a short list. And then it'll provide you some details, including the permissions, right? Um, and then like um, the user ID and group, uh, the user and group of uh, the file, right? Um, the file size, right? Uh, and then the last modification uh, date and time of the file. Or the file modification time, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yep. Um, another common flag is uh, lssh, right? Uh, you normally use that with dash l, la, right? So that's to uh, show the sizes in human readable formats, right? Um, yeah. That's the main flag that you normally use with ls. Um, and then you have the sorting flags uh, to sort by certain things. So like, uh, and I would recommend that you use, uh, um, you check the manual pages for exactly because there are quite a few sorting flags. So there's dash S, right? Um, and then um, dash S and then there's also dash uh, T. Uh, dash sorry dash capital S dash capital T um, uh, yeah dash you know okay version is not a common um, 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 property right um, but yeah and then um, you can also sort by instead of um, modification time right you can sort by access time, which is dash u, although your file system may not track ex uh, access time, right? Um, yeah. And then there's the last one is, uh, last common flag is maybe dash r, right? Which is to reverse the sort order, right? Uh, so then you might, you might actually see a common uh, set of flags, which is dash lrt, right? Uh, what does that mean? Dash L means to have a long list, right? Dash R means to reverse, right? And then dash T means to uh, sort by time. So that means we are sorting by time in descending, uh, sorry. Uh, um, okay, so dash T will sort it by, sort by time in descending order by default. <laughs> Meaning that the newest files are at the top, right? So if you reverse it, then the newest files are at the bottom, right? Then you can get uh, basically the newest files here at the bottom, right? Um, yeah. So that's a common use of ls. Um, it on. Okay, so let me go back to my uh, temporary directory, right? Um, so how do you make a directory? You can use the make the command, right? Um, just make the so let's make a directory called a and now we can use ls and we can see that the uh, command is there right so let me just push it to the top of the screen oops yeah. so we have made a directory a right and then now if ls there will be a command or directory a in the um in the current directory right um so make there doesn't really have Common flags that I use, right? Uh, but okay. Uh, one of the common flags that I use is like this dash p, right? So what does dash p do? Basically, it lets you do this, right? Uh, so if you do, if you if you don't specify dash p, it will tell you that b doesn't exist, right? Uh, in this case, you know there's only a in this current directory, so you can't make a directory b c d e f if b doesn't exist, right? Um, 
So instead of making them one by one, we can specify, uh, specify dash P, right? And that will let you, um, that will let you basically, uh, sorry, then make, they will automatically make all the parent directories for you, right? Um, see, so now there's B, and if LS B, there's C, if LS B slash C, there's D and so on, right? Um, yeah, so that is uh, make there. Right, and then we have uh, RM, right? Um, so what can you do with RM? You can remove uh, files and directories, right? Um, okay, so before we remove a file, we should create a file, right? So uh, let's move on to touch first, right? So how do you make a file? You can use touch to create uh, or uh, update the modification time of a file, right? Um, so if you, if you touch a non-existent file, it will create a file. So let's make a file. ls-l right so now we have our file right and uh, in the ls output um, okay so your shell may have uh, ls output as colored right uh, if you have colored ls output then you will be able to see the colors right distinguishing uh, directories and uh, non-directories right um, yeah Uh, but if not, you will be you can tell whether uh, something is a directory or not by using uh, by looking at the uh, file mode, right? It's called the mode, right? And it, it includes the permissions, right? But uh, the, this first bit here tells you some other things, including like the type of the file, right? So you can tell whether the file is a directory or just a normal file or something else. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Okay, so now we have created a file, right? Um, so we want to remove a file. You can just rm the file, right? Rm. So now the file is no longer there. If you want to remove a directory, you can't just rm the directory, right? Uh, you need to. Um, you need to use rm r, right? What does dash r mean? It means recursive, meaning that you remove everything that is uh, within the directory as well as the directory itself. So if I rm dash r a, uh, that would be fine, right? Um, so another alternative to removing directories is to use rm there, right? rm directory, right? Uh, so let's make there a again. So if uh, so, the difference between rm dash r and rm there is that uh, rm there, the directory must already be empty, right? Uh, if you don't, uh, if the directory is not already empty, then it will uh, result in an error. Uh, but if you use rm dash r, it will just remove everything in the directory tree before removing, uh, you know, every file in the directory before removing the directory itself, right? Um, so it depends on what exactly you want. Right. Um, so now we have, uh, let's make our file again, right? Um, we can use cp, cp to copy a file. Right, so now we have um, file and then we have copied it to file 2 right um, and then you can use cp to copy recursively right so normally copy will not copy um, cp will not copy directories right but if you want it to copy directories you can do cp-r and then it will copy recursively right right and then now we have uh, a b and c right uh, and then C will have the same files, or C, D, E, F, right? Um, next, you might have, uh, next, how do you move a file or rename a file, right? Uh, first, how do you move a file? So you just move, uh, let's say you MV file, and you want to move it in the directory called A, right? Then you can do that. So now file, a uh, file called file is in the directory A. Okay, and um, you can also move directories into, of course, you can move directories, right? So now if you ls a, right, b will be in the directory a, right? Um, so basically, if you specify the target as a, uh, if the target is a directory, right, what you'll be doing is renaming, uh, if the target is an existing directory, what you'll be doing is to um, 
move whatever it is into that directory, right? Um, if the target is not an existing directory, meaning that the target is a file or a um, yeah, or non-existent file, right? Um, then what you'll be doing is renaming the you you'll be renaming this to uh, whatever you specify here. So for example, if I do mv file to file, right? What I'll be doing is renaming, right? Technically, it's still a move, right? Because I'm just moving this file to a different name, right? Um, and but normally uh, we will call that renaming. Right, so that's uh, and you can rename directories as well, right? So M V A B. Now A is called B, right? So that's how you rename and move uh, files uh, in Unix. Okay, and um, last but not least, we have P W D, right? P W D just uh, prints the current working directory, right? Um, the path of the current working directory, right? Um, so that's uh, quite useful, right? Okay, um, so um, now this is not really related to the shell, right? But um, it's somewhat a general Unix um, convention that um, any file that starts with the, whose name starts with dot, right, is hidden uh, by default. So we can make a file that is called uh, dot hidden, right? Uh, and if you do ls or ls-l, you see that this file is not listed. And how do you get this file to be listed? You can do ls dash la, right? Or dash a, right? You specify dash a, and then it will list hidden files as well. Right, and then you can see that uh, that dot hidden is also listed. So you notice that um, dot and dot dot are also actually listed as files, right? Um, in the directory, right? So that's somewhat reflective of how um, dot and dot dot are implemented uh, in the OS, right? Uh, they are present. They are present as uh, virtual entries in any directory, right? Um, so dot is just a directory link referring to the current directory. Dot dot uh, refers to the parent directory. Okay. Okay. Um. Any any questions? Um. All right. Um, if no questions, let's uh, move on. Right. So um, now let's talk about command editing. Right. Um, so what do I mean by command editing? Yep. Slides are there. Um, so what do I mean by command editing? So um, suppose you have a long shell command, right? Um, for example, uh, right? Um, okay, so this is the echo command, right? What do you think it does? It just echoes whatever you, uh, whatever arguments you provide after it, right? Um, so suppose you have a long command, right, in the shell. And, uh, you know, instead of moving, you know, if you need to move to a particular position in the in the, in the shell, right, in the command line, right, um, you know, it, it may be a bit slow if to just use the left and right um, arrow keys or whatever, right? Um, or sometimes your left and right arrow keys don't work. Then uh, what do you want to, how do you, uh, you know, how do you edit uh, the, the command quickly, right? So there are a few shortcuts you can use. Actually, there are a lot of shortcuts you can use, right? Um, so by default, um, these shortcuts are based off Emacs. Um, or they call it Emacs-based uh, key bindings, right? Um, but there are also... Uh, you can... You may be able... You may be able to look up how to switch uh, the command editing to Vim mode if you prefer Vim, right? Um, but generally, the default is uh, this mode, right? So uh, this is what uh, I will cover, right? So how do you jump to the beginning of the line? You press Control A, right? Control A will bring you to the beginning of the line. 
So control A. Right? If you press control E, it will bring you to the end of the current line you're uh, entering. Okay. So then if you press alternate B, right? Alt B for alt back, right? Back. It will uh, move back by one word. If you press alternate F for forward, it will move forward one word, right? Um, if you press control K, it will delete from the cursor to the end of the line, right? So what does K stands for? It stands for kill, kill line, right? Um, there is control... <laughs> okay. Um, a bit troublesome because... Uh, okay, so there is an undo function in the shell uh, nowadays, right? Uh, depends on your exact version, right? Uh, but in my particular case, the undo uh, conflicts with um, a keyboard shortcut of my terminal emulator, right? Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, control shift, control underscore, it will be control shift minus, right? And in, in the case of my terminal emulator, control shift minus is to zoom out, right? Or decrease the font size. So um, I can't show you that, but you can try control uh, shift minus or control underscore uh, on your machine, right? Um, if you don't, if you're, yeah, it, it probably will work unless you're using a terminal emulator that has a uh, control uh, shift minus as a keyboard shortcut as well. Yep, uh, so you can give a try. Uh, undo, right? Um, okay, and then there's the opposite command, which is to uh, delete from the cursor to the start of the line, right? Control U, right? So let's say I have a long command. Uh, let me copy this. Okay. Um, so, you know, let's say I'm here. I will, and delete, I can delete from there to the start of the line, right? And then if I want, I can kill the rest of the line. Then I have an uh, empty line. Right, and then there's also how do you delete a word? If you just want to delete a single word, right? Um, you can press Control W and you will delete from the cursor to the start of the current word, right? right there you go let's control w right and last but not least you can do you can try control x control e right uh, this may or may not work depending on the default settings on your your particular system but um, if it works for you right what it does is it will open the uh, command in um, your editor right whatever it happens to be, right? And then you can use the full features of your editor to edit the command, right? So that, that this is what you do if you, this is what you would do if you had a, a long, you know, very long command line, right? Um, that you want to edit, right? Uh, instead of doing that in the shell, right? You can uh, go out, you can, you can pull up your full editor in order to edit it comfortably. Right, and then of course, the moment you exit the editor, it will be executed. So just be careful of that, right? Um, so uh, in, in case you're not sure how to press this, you press Control X first, then you let go of everything. You press Control E, right? So there are more uh, editing shortcuts that you can use. Uh, you can check out the read line documentation, right? So what is read line? Read line is this uh, library that uh, this that shells use to implement this, uh, you know, in interactive prompt, right? Uh, and therefore, right, what else uses this, uh, what, what other programs use this, uh, sort of interactive, uh, sorry, sorry, what other programs use, uh, read line, for example, uh, Python, right, the Python, uh, prompt uses read line as well, so, uh, you can do all the same shortcuts that you do, um, yeah, you can use all the same shortcuts that you do in Python, so, for example, I can press Control W, you know, I can, uh, you can jump uh jump by word delete a word etc right uh but control x control e in particular uh, this sorry this uh, control x control e in particular this is a bash extension right so it may not work uh, in python right uh but other than that it should work <laughs> yeah okay so uh command control shortcut right um so these are not related to read line anymore. Um, sorry, before that, uh, can the choice of editor be changed? Yes, you can look into how to edit your 
environment variable editor, the editor environment variable. Right. So um, it's uh, somewhat out of scope of this uh, workshop, but you can look up the uh, um, you can look up the editor editor environment variable. So you can look up how to change that environment variable, right? Uh, so that the you can you can use your favorite uh, editor, right? Um, and this environment variable affects uh, other things as well, not just not just the bad, uh, not just um, this, uh, not just this shortcut, right? Um, you know, most commands that open up an editor will look for uh, the editor command. So that includes like git, right? Um, when you are uh, that includes git, right? When you are like, for example, uh, writing the commit, uh, when you use the git commit command and you have to write a commit message, right? Um, you know, git will open up, uh, will honor this uh, environment variable. Okay. Um, so command control shortcuts, right? So what do I mean by command control, right? Um, controlling commands that are running, right? As well as uh, controlling the terminal in general, right? So the first, let's not look at uh, the first two first. Let's look at Control L, right? Uh, Control L clears the screen, right? Um, or you can use like clear. That also works. And there's also another command that uh, may be useful is reset, right? Um, so when is reset in particular useful? Reset is useful if you have accidentally somehow, um, um, like for example, you accidentally cut a... Um, you accidentally printed um, some binary data to the uh, shell and now your output is a bit wonky or something like that, you can use reset to reset the output of the, reset every, the entire terminal state, right? Um, and clear any, you know, accidents that, you know, or whatever that you may have um, made. Yep. Okay. And then um, let's look at the uh, control C and Z. So let's say I have a command, right? So this is a command sleep, right? Um, so if you wait 10 seconds, it will terminate, right? But if you want to terminate early, or if you want to terminate any command early, you can press control C, right? And uh, that will send an interrupt to the command. And for most commands or most programs, that will just terminate the program. Um, now, if you want to, uh, Pause the command, right? Uh, for most commands, you should be able to use this uh, control Z, right? Uh, and that will pause or suspend the command and put it into the background, right? Uh, then you will be able to, um, yeah. Then you will be able to, yeah, you will pause the command and then it will just be uh, in the background until you continue it. So you can press F, you can type FG and then it will continue uh, the command. Uh, but in this case, the command uh, exited immediately. Lah. Um, so there are, uh, later on we will talk about shell job control, I believe. So, uh, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, now, uh, you can ignore what this means for now. I just, I'm just going to make a command that, uh, makes a lot of output to the screen, right? Uh, Right, so you, you see this command now prints hello every uh, half a second. So if you are you know if you are reading the output on the screen, it may be a bit annoying, right? Uh, so what you can do is press Control S and it will. Uh, you can press Control S and you will pause or stop the output to the screen, right? And then after that, you can press Control Q to allow the output to continue, right? So you notice that it actually blocked the the program from writing, right? So do uh, be aware of that when you press control when you use control S because it will actually um you know if any if the program is waiting for the write to complete, right? Uh then it will actually block the program. Okay. Um so yeah, that is uh, basically it for basic use of the shell, right? Uh, some basic shell commands, right? Um, now we will go into scripting. Uh, 
and we will encounter more commands as we go along and then we will figure out what they do okay um, any any questions at this point Okay, um, so let's continue. So, uh, scripting, right? How do you um, how do you write a script? A script is just a file, right? Uh, basically, a text file, right? Um, and then you just write stuff into the file, right? Um, so let's write our first script, right? Uh, so I'm going to nano, I'm going to use nano as my editor, but you can use um, any editor that you're comfortable with, right? Um, so if you're not sure what to use, then just use nano with me. Lah. Okay. So I'm going to open example script, right? Uh, first line, I'm just going to type this, right? Go something, okay? Okay, I will follow the, I'm going to follow the slides exactly, right? So what is this first line? Uh, we will talk about that in a bit, right? And then the second line is your script. Uh, you know, second line onwards will be your script. Okay, so then um, now let's try to execute our script, right? Let's just do example script. Uh, oh no, it doesn't work, right? So what do you need to do? You need to use the chmod command, right? chmod stands for change mode, right? Um, so mainly it's used to uh, change permissions on the uh, on on file so what we need to do is give the uh, script a uh, the execute bit right uh, you need to set the executable bit to on the script so, so that you can execute the um, so that you can execute it right but even if you don't right what you can do is you can run it using like that right you can if you don't want to make the script exec uh, executable for whatever reason right you can use the you can just uh, directly call the uh, shell on the script right uh, and then it will run the script for you right uh, but suppose you want to do this right you can do that um, suppose you want to uh, if you set the exec executable um, bit right then you can do you can do this right so you're running it you're running the script directly um, rather than uh, calling bash uh, rather than uh, explicitly calling bash right um, I mean ultimately the sh the line that with the first line that we keyed in just now right uh, this uh, shebang line right uh, basically will make the operating system uh, invoke bash for you right uh, so you don't have to do it yourself Right, so again, this line is a shebang, right? This is what we call a shebang, right? Uh, because um, basically the hash character is a she and then the exclamation mark is a bang, right? So shebang, right? Um, and then after that, it's just a path to a uh, interpreter, right? Um, or, you know, a program that will read this script and run it for you, right? Um, so yeah, and then echo is echo, right? Um, so there are other interpreters that you can use, right? So for example, if you're writing, uh, if you write Python programs, you may notice that um, the first line of your Python pro of some Python programs will start with this, right? Uh, this shebang. Um, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, so that is, um, that is a shebang line. So now we have made our first shell script, right? So let's see what we can do. Uh, what more we can do with the shell okay um, okay so um, just now we have I've already talked about some uh, flags right um, or options for like certain commands right so um, the to the normal term for these options are called flags right and then um, they usually have uh, or depending on the command right um, they may accept short form or long form or both, right? Uh, so you should, you can check out the manual page for exactly how the flags are uh, accepted. Um, typically more common, sorry, typically common 
more common flags are you know that there will be a short form and then uh, the less common flags uh, will only be available as uh, long form flags right um so what's the difference between a long form and short form flag basically the number of dashes right so short form dash has one uh, sh short form flags have one dash right and the long form flags have two dashes but not all programs follow this convention right so um there are certain programs that just have long form flags but they use only a single dash for example your compiler gcc is will be one of them right yeah so there are certain com uh, gcc has some options that are long but they only use a single dash right it's kind of weird because it's a mix of both you see um so you should check the manual page of the or documentation of the particular command la, to see exactly how the command accepts flags, right? Um, there are even some commands that accept flags using the Windows style, right? Which is like using slash. So on Windows, the flags are specified using slash A, slash B, etc., right? Uh, instead of dash uh, for Windows commands. Um, Windows commands being like your Windows, you know, uh, command line, uh, command prompt commands, right? Uh, if you have other commands on Windows, typically they'll just follow the dash as well because, um, um, you know, um, Unix, uh, Unix conventions, right? Okay, and then lastly, if you have uh, multiple short flags, right? And um, I, I did this, I did this just now, but I uh, didn't explicitly say. But if you have multiple short flags. Uh, typically you can combine them right uh, again it depends on the program right so you should uh, try it out on the particular program you are using right um, not all programs will uh, not all programs will recognize combined flags right uh, but for most programs you are able to combine uh, multiple multiple short flags right um, like that into a single you know dash r f or you know just basically combining all the letters into one uh, uh, argument or one word. Okay. Okay, so now, um, so now you may wonder like, since all the flags start with dash, right? Uh, what if I have, um, you know, what if I have a file name that starts with dash, right? How do I, how do I use a command on a file whose name starts with dash? For example, I want to create a file called um, A. For example, I want to create a file called dash a, right? Uh, let's touch dash a. Ooh, right? how come I cannot create a file called dash a, right? Uh, because touch is treating this as a option, right? So what you want to do is to provide a double dash, right? So a double dash by itself, like that, right? Uh, we, we, if, if you put something after this, the double dash, then it becomes an option, right? But if you just put a double dash by itself, right? Then this is treated as um, a marker to basically... Um, Treat it as a marker to just uh, indicate the end of uh, command options, right? Um, and then if you do this, you'll be able to oh, you'll be able to create the file uh, dash a, right? Okay, and this applies to most commands as well. So if you do, for example, if you do ls dash a, you won't uh, it'll be treated it'll be treated as an option so if you do ls dash 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 a right then you will only be listing that file right right um okay and the same applies for most other commands right um okay okay so some common flags right uh, dash a right uh refers to all files right um so that's on ls and then um, there'll be dash f dash f usually refers to some kind of uh, forcing so we can look at what um, rm dash f does so see dash f force right so it means um, ignore non-existent files and arguments and never prompt right meaning that um, so there are certain cases where rm might uh, ask you are you sure you want to delete this file right um and also there's a uh, typically rm will prevent uh, will print an error 
if you try and uh, list a file that um, RM will print an error if you try to list a file if you specify a file that doesn't exist right um, so if you specify dash f then RM will not uh, print an error right um, and it, you know it will just uh, delete whatever files exist right and then um, uh, that's that Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, so there's also dash dash help and then dash dash version, right? Um, yeah, those are the typical um, uh, flags, right? Uh, not, not, they, they're not, of course, they're not consistent, right? So uh, the only one that is mm, generally guaranteed to work is dash dash help. But even then, I, it's not like 100%, right? Uh, some commands uh, may accept dash H or dash question mark, you know. So um, typically, you just have to try. But the first one that I would normally try is dash dash help, right? Because that's the most common. Um, that's the one that exists on most programs, right? Um, yeah. Okay, and then uh, dash V. Uh, Usually, it means enable verbose output, meaning that um, you want the program to output um, more, you know, um, you, you want the program to output more, let's say, detailed output, right? Uh, you use dash V, right? Uh, but again, it's not like 100%, uh, right? For example, dash V in grep, right? Grep means um, to... So grep is a tool that you can use to search for lines that match, uh, you know, uh, match a certain pattern right in a file right so what dash v does in grep is to uh, invert the pattern basically you want, you want to search for lines that don't match the pattern yeah so that is uh, dash v in grep right so it's not uh, flags are usually not 100% uh, consistent across all programs now. okay uh, let's move on Um, so a brief note about Unix uh, directory structure, right? Um, yeah. So Unix, uh, so on Windows, you have this idea of drives, right? So you have the C drive, D drive, etc., right? Um, instead of, uh, so in Unix, you don't have that. You just have a single file system, um, you know, hierarchy, right? Um, and everything is uh, mounted in the same uh, hierarchy, right? So basically, you have a single root directory slash, right? Uh, and then basically under slash you have everything uh, on your system right uh, instead of having multiple roots or multiple drives like windows are there any difference in the content of uh, man and help uh, typically man is more detailed right uh, help is usually shorter right um, but not all commands will have uh, man right and not all commands will have help right so some commands only have a man page some commands only have uh, help option and they don't have a man page. Uh, yeah. Most commands have both, right? Uh, but not all. It really depends on the particular command. Uh. So you should you try try the try help. Uh, if help doesn't give you the answer you need, then you look at man the man page. Okay. Um yeah, so uh, on Unix, we use the forward slash instead of the backslash, right? Uh, on Windows, typically you use the backslash for a uh, directory separator, right? And finally, um, if you are interested in the exact layout of uh, Unix, uh, you know, uh, the Linux, Linux, right? Uh, other Unix systems will have their own, um, other Unix systems will have their own, you know, uh, convention, but Linux tends to follow Linux systems tend to follow the file system hierarchy standard nowadays, right? Um, and uh, there is a link here in the slides if you are interested to know exactly what the layout is. Okay, um, so these are some important Unix directories, right? Um, so most of the executables will be in slash bin and slash sbin and slash user bin and slash local user local bin, right? Um, so nowadays, uh, bin and user bin are unified, right? Um, but in the past, uh, it wasn't, right? So slash bin and slash user bin were separate. Uh, but nowadays, uh, bin is on certain uh, Linux distributions, right? Um, 
bin is a uh, symbolic link to user bin, right? And as bin, um, um, as bin in the past used to contain basically like super user or administrator commands, right? Um, uh, but now, you know, it has, it's typically been unified into slash user bin as well. Yeah. Um, so the reason these exist are, are, are quite uh, basically historical, right? You can go read about it. Um, but yeah, it's that's why nowadays it's just unified into a single directory like, because there's those his, those historical reasons don't uh, apply anymore, right? It, you can guess like it's actually related to re, uh, to resource constraints because um, basically you, you you know you didn't have enough uh, space on a single partition or uh, or a single disk to have all the executables, right? So you have to split them across different uh, uh, partitions and therefore. Uh, when you mount partitions, they can they, you mount them to a directory, right? So then you have to have multiple directories containing executables. Um, on Linux, your home, your user home directories are in slash home, right? Um, and yeah, on macOS you have slash users, and of course on Windows you have C colon slash users, right? Um, and in the past you had C documents and settings. I don't know if anyone remembers that. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then uh, the, usually your log files are in slash var slash log, right? Um, sometimes it's also in slash run slash uh, etc, right? Um, so um, we will use this later on to as um, you know some uh, example, uh, some files to use um, to, to work with, la, right? Um, as example output or input. Okay, then we have our temporary files in slash tmp. So it's just, so slash TMP is a directory that is not, uh, basically the contents of it uh, can be lost uh, or delete or, or cleared, right? Um, every now and then, right? And and applications should expect that, um, that you know, files in slash TMP are not persistent, right? uh, especially across a system reboot. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's talk about shell syntax now. Okay, so when you run a command, right, uh, when you just key in something to the shell, right, uh, echo A, B, C, right. So when you just enter a bare line like that, the first word is the command name, right? Um, yeah. And then you have multiple arguments after that. Okay. Um, so let's talk about shell variables, right? So we can have variables in a shell, right? Um, how do you... Uh, use variables so you can you can set a variable by just di doing like name equals to or let's say variable name so let's follow the example here so name equals julius um, so julius is the name of the person who originally wrote these slides so name equals julius right so you notice that this is not a command right it was not run as a command because obviously i don't have a command with this uh with this exact name, right? Um, okay, so once you have set the variable, then you can use a, the dollar sign, right? And then followed by the name to access a variable, right? Uh, so we want to echo its name, right? And you can even use a variable in the command position. So if I do just this, then it will look for a command uh, named Julius, right? Um, which probably doesn't exist. Okay, and then there are also a number of uh, special variables, right? Um, so, dollar question mark, right, is the, gets you the exit code of the previous command, right? So that means the immediate previous command, right? So uh, not not the successful command that ran, but the immediate, uh, immediate previous command. So if you ran uh, something that doesn't exist, then you also get the, you, you will get the status code uh, corresponding to that. Right. Um, then okay, there are these commands true and false, right? True is a command that always succeeds and false is a command that always fails, right? Okay. So success in a shell, right? Uh in shell, right, um zero is true or success, right? And then uh, false is one, right? So that is reverse of what we are normally used to, right? Um in shell zero is the only true value right uh, and then any other exit code is 
false, right? Um, so one all the way to you know any number is false, right? Um, okay, right. And then there are some other variables that um, so dollar zero is the name of the script, right? Typically, right? Uh, name then dollar one to dollar nine is uh, the uh, arguments to you know the arguments in, in the order, right? Um, and then there's dollar hash. That's the number of arguments, right? And then, uh, so we, we look at the arguments uh, variables in, in a later on. Um, I think there is a script where we, yeah, there we go. And then we will have, and then we have dollar dollar, which is just prints you the process ID of the current shell, right? Uh, which may be useful sometimes, uh, depending on what you're doing. Okay, so let's look at, um, Let's look at how these uh, variables are, you know, um, expanded, right? So let's create a new script. Okay, and then again we will um, ch mod it. So you can see that if I, yeah, so dollar zero is the whatever I specify here, right? So actually, if I do this, then dollar zero will be this, right? So um, actually, so dollar zero to whatever, it just corresponds to exactly what you key in and um, what you key in here, right? So zero is the first thing that you key in, one is the second thing and so on, right? Um, in, in your command line, right? That's why zero is actually the name of the uh, typically the name of the um, uh, script like, because that's how you execute a script, right? Um, yeah. Okay, then $1 is the first argument, $2 is the second argument, and then dollar hash is the number of arguments aside from um, the, aside from $0. Like. Okay, so now let's try and provide some arguments. So A, B, C, D, E, so now we have dollar, um, yeah. Now we have dollar one, a in dollar one, b in dollar two, right? And then there are five arguments in total, right? So the question is then, um, what if you want to provide an argument with a space, right? Uh, that's why we you would use quoting. I can't remember if we talk about quoting. Okay, yeah, we do uh, later on. So I won't talk about it now. Okay, so but this is uh, basically the you know variables and arguments right uh, to your script in Bash right uh, and in shell in general right. Uh, so if you write a shell script and you need to take in arguments, this is how you would do it right. You would use the dollar one dollar two etc. Um, uh, you know very uh, special variables. Okay. Um, now we look at loops, right? So um, I, I'm sure you know what a loop is, right? You have for loops and while loops, right? Um, so a loop is used to run a command um, multiple times, right? Um, so let's look at a for loop first. So what does this do, right? Um, let's just try it out, right? So what do you think this does? Okay, so it prints hello five times, right? Um, so then let's break it down a bit, right? Um, so for, right, for, I mean, that's a, uh, that's a syntax, right? So the next thing after for is a variable name, right? Um, that is that is the name to which, you know, all the elements in the, the list here, right, the list here will be assigned, right? So i will be one two three four five in this case right um and then how does this list exactly work right uh, what, and what syntax is this uh, we will look at that in a bit right then so for each element in this list we will do echo uh you will we will do the list of commands here right um and then after that after the list of commands there'll be a done 
So if I want to use i, then I can do that, right? So we can add an si here, dollar i here, right? And then that will print, uh, you know, hello one two three four five, right? Um, okay, and lastly, you can also split this across multiple lines, right? So for i in, uh, instead of the semicolon. Um, but you know, if you if you don't want to split them across lines, then you can use the uh, the, the the semicolon. <laughs> okay, so now let's look at exactly how um, this works, right? So this what is sec one five? So sec one five actually um, prints one two three four five, right? Uh, it's a command by itself, right? So then what is this dollar and then parentheses, right? Um, the dollar parentheses is called uh, is command substitution, right? So what we're going to do is basically uh, run the command inside the parentheses, and then we'll subst substitute the entire uh, you know this entire thing with the uh, output of the program, right? Uh, so in this case, it's substituted with one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, and then um, the for loop will basically split whatever is here by white space, right? Uh, and then uh, each, uh, and then assign it to each, uh, assign each value in that, uh, you know, in that list uh, with um, uh, to i, right? Or to whatever variable you specify here. Right? So if you're using bash, right, in particular, there is an equivalent that you don't have to use an external command for. It's called one, it's like that. Right? Um, so it's a, uh, it's a bash equivalent, right? Not a shell, uh, if I'm not wrong. Right? So if you want something that is POSIX uh, shell compatible, um, then you should use this. But if you know that you're writing for bash, then you can use this, right? Okay. Um, okay, and then lastly, uh, after the do block, then we have echo hello. So this is a command, right? Um, yeah, so oh yeah, we did mention the path here, right? So um so where does uh echo come in, right? Um so in a shell script there are, the the shell typically has certain built-in commands, right? So for is actually a built-in, right? Um echo is also a built-in, right? Um but it's possible to uh you so you may not actually have a um what do you call that? You may not have an executable file or program that is called echo because some commands uh, are usually provided by the shell itself, right? But it's possible that we want to use the system's echo. In my case, my system has an echo, right? Uh, then we can do this, right? So how do we know um, what a command is? You can use uh, where a command is located. You can use which. So, okay. so it tells you that echo is at um, user bin echo. Right, or you can use uh, this command. Uh, right, yeah. So in the bat, in the case for bash, right, echo is actually a built-in. So when you just type echo a, it's not actually calling. It's not actually launching slash uh, launching slash bin slash bin slash echo, right? Um, it's just handling it in the shell itself, right? But if you want to use uh, slash bin slash echo, then you can. Um, you you can you can explicitly specify this, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. So aside from programs that are shell built ins, right? When you execute a command, it will uh, search it in the path, right? So I can show you my path. So the path is a colon separated uh, list of directories, right? And basically it will search each of these directories for whatever command you specify, right? So for example, ls, right? Uh, ls is here, right? So it has searched, uh, when I type ls, it will search through this, uh, it will search through this, you know, list of directories until it finds a uh, ls, right? And then it will run, it will launch that um, directory, right? So that's the path. 
I'm a bit confused as to why Julius put this under this section, but okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so now I'm going to talk about something that it's not exactly in the slides. It's called the while loop, right? Um, Actually, no. Let's not talk about while loop first. Let's talk about conditionals first, right? And then we'll talk about the while loop. Okay. Um, yeah. So we can have conditionals in the shell as well, right? So basically, your if, uh, if, if, then else, right? Um, so we can try this, right? Let's just try what this does. So this prints true, right? So what does this command do? Basically, um, the syntax is if condition then body fi. Okay, so then what is condition? Condition is a command, right? Um, so if the command, you so when you have an if, right, the shell will run the command. If the exit code is zero, meaning the command succeeded, then it will run uh, the then, right? Otherwise, it will run the else. Yeah, so it's like your typical else if. Just keep in mind that the exit code um, is inverted from what you usually used to, right? Um, if the exit code is zero, then that is treated as true, right? Uh, and if the exit code is false, uh, if the exit code is non-zero, then that is treated as a uh, false, right? Or a uh, failure. So maybe it'll be clearer to say if success and if failure, right? Uh, but yeah, so the shell if test for success of this condition uh, command, right? And then it will run the body and otherwise it will run the else. Okay, so then um, now what is this uh, command that we, or condition that we tested, right? So test itself is a command, right? Uh, so test uh, allows you to test for various things, right? Um, so you can look at the man page for test, right? Uh, and um, yeah. So how does test work? Basically, you can have test expression, right? And then, um, yeah. So it will just do the test for you and then it will return true or false based on uh, the result. Uh. So what can it test? Basically, it can do some simple comparisons, right? Um, you know, the length of string is non-zero. Um, length of string is zero. Uh, strings are equal. Strings are not equal. Um, you know, um, um, yeah, you can compare numbers for you, right? And you can also check that the files are equal, newer, older. You can check that files exist and check that files are a certain kind of file. For example, you want them to be a directory or execute, uh, you want them to be executable, right? Um, then you can check that using tests, right? Right. Um, so there is an alternative syntax for test, right, which is this. And you can see the result, which is slash, uh, which is zero, right? And it'll be the same as F as if I did this. Right? Um, so we can see that in action with if as well. And I think you are more likely to see this command. Uh, you're more likely to see this, uh, this syntax, right? Um, because it looks nicer. Yeah. <laughs> Just take note that you must have the space, right? You must have the space between the open uh, bracket and the dash uh, or whatever it is, right? If you do this, it will be treated as a command, right? No, oh, I mean, it is a command, right? This is this itself is a command uh, whose name is just open, open bracket or left bracket, right? And you can try that, right? Open left bracket is a shell built in. And if I'm not wrong, there should be this as well, right? There you go. Um, so pretty interesting, right? Yeah, that doesn't exist. Um, okay, so now we have conditionals, right? Then we can we can look at while loops, right? So what is a while loop? A while loop is basically like an if, except you just have uh, you, you you repeat the command in the loop uh, over and over, right? Sorry, you repeat the 
the the the body of the you know you, you repeatedly check la, right instead of just once right so and if it's just you check once and you run the block uh, the true block once a uh, while as you check once you run the true block uh, the, you, you run the block and you, you repeat until the condition is false so we can do this right uh, while bin is a directory right um, we do uh, do echo hello done and then it will keep printing hello okay uh, so I'm going to do this right um, um, okay So I'm going to negate this while exist uh some file. Okay, whoops. So some file does not exist. Now I'm going to touch some file, right? Then it will exist, and then you'll see that loop exits, right? So that's a while loop, right? So the syntax is quite similar to your if, right? Except that this is do instead of then, right? And this is done instead of uh fi. Otherwise, this itself is just a command uh, that is uh, used as a condition, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so that is the while loop. Okay. Um, it's very common that you use a while true. Right, or you can even use a while colon. Right, so what is while colon? The colon is a special command. Right, you can you can search it. Oh, it doesn't exist. The colon is a special shell built-in, I guess. <laughs> yeah, colon is a shell built-in that does basically it just returns true all the time. Right, so whatever you do, it will return true. Right, so a common a common way to have an infinite loop in the shell is to do this. Right, while colon. Right, and then. Basically, that will return true. There will be an infinite loop uh, until you use break, right? Yeah. So in the shell, you have break and continue as well, right? So break, uh, yeah, and continue, yeah. Okay. Um. So let us uh do a small exercise to uh combine what we have seen, right? So let's uh fake ls. Okay, so what we are doing here is basically creating a command that is like ls, but it only prints directories, right? Okay. Okay, and then we will, like usual, we will make it executable and then let's run fake ls okay and then we will see that it prints uh, directory b directory c and then that uh matches with our expectations right we have directory a directory b uh we have directory b and directory c right so that is uh that's correct okay uh but then now we have a bug right what if our directory is called um uh, my documents right like like windows okay now we have our directory my documents and then um ooh, our fake ls doesn't uh list it oh no right uh so what's happening here right remember that our for loop uh splits the items by white space right so then um it will split the items in the ls it will split my documents into two separate items, right? Instead of just one item, my documents. Um, and that's uh, not what we want, right? Okay. So this happens because uh, 
bash uh, and the shell in general splits arguments by white space uh, generally right um, right so for example if we do um For example, if we do, if we have a variable my document, right, and then we try to do, right, um, then you see that we have a problem because now, um, right, because this is basically being treated as my documents, right, um. And it's not expecting this second argument here, right? What we want is for it to be treated as a single argument, right? Um, so what we need to do is to use quotes, right? Uh, okay. So uh, how do we fix our script, right? One way is possibly to do this. Right, and... Oops, now that doesn't do anything. Oh dear. Right, so why does this not work? Right, that's because, uh, okay, first let me explain the differences between the kinds of quotes, right? So uh, we can use our variable uh, example to sort of try that. So if I first do like that, right, then you can see that the arguments are like, you know, each of these dash A, B, right? Now if I do this, you can see that now the output of the entire the entire output of this uh, ls is being stuffed into a single uh, argument right uh, right so then um, what's happening with uh, for f in uh, quote as a dollar ls right the output of the entire ls is uh, treated as a single item right and therefore uh, none of obviously there is no file with there is no file with the there's no file whose name equals um, to the concatenation of the names of all the files, right? So uh, obviously that doesn't work. Okay. So how do we fix our script, right? Um, this is actually a general uh, problem with Bash, right? Uh, the solution is actually, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a pro general problem with Bash whenever you have when you, whenever you're trying to use the output of a command, right? Um, in a for loop, it's it's basically quite difficult, right? Um, so in general, the answer will be to avoid uh, using outputs of commands in for loops because especially if um, there can be white space in in places where you don't want it, right? Then it becomes quite difficult. Um, so in this case, the way to fix our script is to use uh, wall cards or globbing, right? Um, So what is globbing? Globbing is basically um, how to uh, a, a nice way to match uh, file names, right? Um, so if I do ls, so if I do ls star, right? Uh, you can see okay. Let's not use ls. Let's use variable example. If I do this, right? You can see that you know each of the arguments that were printed, uh, each of the files in the current directory are passed as arguments to. Uh, whatever it uh, or uh, yeah, I pass as arguments to variable example. So that means that this star, right, is being replaced by um, yeah, this star is being replaced by you know uh, the file names in the current directory, right? And you notice that this is different. the The count of arguments is different from when I used dollar ls, and the reason for that is because uh, each file becomes a single argument, right? So then, um my documents right here is being passed as a single argument uh, rather than two separate arguments because of the um, uh, splitting by white space that bash does right okay so then that's how we will fix our script right instead of using a uh, uh, command substitution with uh, ls right we will use a wall card right Okay, and that will allow, and that will then be, you know, treated as, um, uh, treated as a single. So my documents will not be treated as a single list item by, uh, by by bash, right? And then our fake ls will work. Right? You can see, now we have our directory, my documents.
Okay. And then, uh, of course, it's possible to... Your patterns can... Uh, may not... You, you don't have to... Sorry. Uh, your patterns are not just limited to star or question mark or, you know, this, right? You can combine them in, in, in a way. So, for example, you want, to ma- you want to match all the files that have um, uh, E in them. No, star does not mean LS, right? Star is not... Star does not mean... Star is not uh, calling LS. Star is just telling Bash, okay, um, search for all the files, uh, replace star with all the uh, files, uh, file names in the current directory, right? See, it's not calling LS. It's just listing the files in the current directory by itself. Okay? So star, this is a separate syntax uh, that is uh, present in the, uh, that the shell provides for you to uh, match files in the current directory. So star is replaced by, um, star matches anything, right? So it will be replaced by um, all the file names in the current directory. But you can do something more complicated. For example, you want to search for all the files that contain A in the, you want to search for file names, all the file names that contain A in the current directory, then you can do this, right? So star will match anything, followed by A, followed by star, right? And then it will basically be replaced by, um, you know, any any file name that contains A, right? Uh, in this directory, right? And you can even do things like this. For example, you want to match all file names that contain a space um, in the directory. Then what you can do is you quote the uh you, you put the um you put a space in quotes and then you can search for all the file names that contain a space or well, same applies for like a dash right all the file names that contain a dash okay and you can also so a uh, question mark is similar except it will match only a single character right star can match star will match anything right zero to any number of characters question mark will match a single character right that's basically it. And then, of course, you have like uh, this set expansion syntax, right? Mm. Right. So what is what this is doing is um, this will be expanded to basically some file question mark and, su- and f- file question mark, right? And then some file question mark will match uh, some file, and then file question mark will match file, right? Or you can do like like that, right? Um, you know, so question mark will match any single character, right? Um, right. So the moment you have star or question mark in a unquoted, you know, uh, unquoted, uh, yeah, the moment you have star or question mark unquoted um, in a script, right? Um, it will be treated as a glob pattern, right? This is called a glob pattern, GLOB, glob pattern, and then bash will expand it, right? So if you don't want a glob expansion, right, what you need to do is to quote the star or question mark, right? Okay. Yeah. If you don't want glob expansion, you need to quote the star or question mark, right? You can use either single quotes or the or double quotes in that case. It doesn't matter, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so what's the difference between single quotes and double quotes? Basically, this is the difference. When you have uh, single quotes, right? Um, when you have, sorry, when you have double quotes, uh, this dollar expansion still happens, right? So you can have name, see, Julius, name is still replaced here. When you have single quotes, right? The um, evaluation of these, uh, you know, variables and uh, substitutions does not happen anymore. Uh, so you lit- a single quotes just means literally this uh, this string, right? Um, yeah. So there's a difference between single and double quotes. Okay. Uh, so that's globbing, right? Um, and of course, you can make more advanced patterns. For example, I want to have, um, I want to match uh, all the files in a certain directory, right? Then you can use, uh, you know, uh, full slash star dot text, right? Or you can match uh, all directories, right? Like that, right? 
basically like you know star slash something something right? you can match all directories right um and um th this is the basic log patterns uh. uh in some cases you may see star star slash star right uh, star star right this will match uh any number of directories right um but it's not supported in uh, basic bash right you there may be an extension you can enable right but by default the basic bash does not support uh, star star yeah. okay um, so that's uh, that is glob patterns okay any questions so far Okay, um, now there's another issue with white space, right? Um, so let's say, uh, well, now dollar foo is empty, right? So what if we want to test, for example, if dollar foo equals bar, then print yes. Right. So what? So in this case, when foo is uh, empty or not defined, right, uh, it's replaced by an empty string. So we get a problem because now, what the command, what the command that is executed is this, right, and this is not a valid uh, test, right. Um. So. Okay. In this particular case, uh, the simple workaround is to just use this, right. This works fine. Uh, or you can just do this, right? Put X at the front. It's, it's a bit hacky, but it works, right? Um, so there is a special, uh, there is a special construct uh, that you can do, right? Uh, like that. And this has somewhat special handling in in Bash, right? Um, so yeah, this has special handling that will handle this case of an empty. Uh, um, you know um, what do you call that empty variable right uh, instead of instead of erroring it will uh, it will handle it correctly like, as you will expect okay and um, yeah the other nice thing about this uh, syntax is that um, sorry the other nice thing about this syntax is that it supports uh, you know your usual ampersand uh, double percent or or uh, or double pipe for and and all right um, instead of using dash a and dash o right so if you look at uh, if you looked at the test manual right uh, this is how you specify and and all right so if you use the double bracket syntax right um, then you can use uh, double ampersand or double pipe right which is maybe more familiar um, Okay, uh, now shell check. Okay, so um, in the interest of time, I will not uh, show shell check, but uh, you can try it out yourself, right? Basically, it's a tool that it will access a linter for uh, shell scripts, right? And it will tell you um, yeah, any bugs or any possible issues that are uh, any any possible issues that you have in your script. For example, if you forgot to uh, quote some variable usage, etc., etc., right, uh, then it will point it out to you, and then you can decide whether that is a problem or that is intentional, right? So there are cases where sometimes you don't want to quote a variable usage. For example, if you actually want um, each each uh, you know if you actually want the variable to be expanded uh, into multiple uh, arguments or whatever it is, right? Uh, then you wouldn't uh, quote the variable. Okay. Okay. So composability, right? So remember the Unix uh, philosophy, right? Um, and basically, uh, yeah. The idea of Unix is um, well, one of the nice things about the command line is, uh, or, or about Unix command line is that uh, basically you have a lot of small utilities that do you know one thing and then. You can use you can use them together to create a complicated uh, you know to do complicated things 
right? Um, so for example, Yes, right. Um, so I'm not using the message because on my system it's uh, slightly uh, sorry, on my system it's restricted. I need root to use the message, right? Uh, but anyway, the message is basically something that prints uh, the kernel log messages, right? So uh, instead of the message, I'm using journal CTL, right? Um, on your system, you should be able to use the message, lah, right? Um, so what does this do, right? Uh, this is just calling. A, this is executing the command journal CTL with the flag dash e, right? Um, I won't go into what that means, but it'll just print out some, you know, log output from the system, right? And then uh, we are piping it, right? We are piping it to the command called tail, right? So basically this means I'll run this command and then I'll send all the output of this command to this command, right? Uh, and so what does tail does? I think you can guess that it just prints the uh, last few lines of all the output that it, it receives, right? So it, it's printing the tail of the output that it, it receives, Um, so now what if I want, uh, what if I want to, for example, filter something, right? Then I can use the grab command, right? So for example, uh, I'm going to grab for something silly, but everything that happened in the 44th minute of any hour, right? Um, then I can search for that. So I can pipe it to grab and then after that, grab it to tail, right? So I just want the last few matches. Um, so then you see here. Now, uh, all the matches that I get happened in the 44th minute of the particular hour, right? So this is a bit of a contrived example, but uh, you can see um, how it works, right? So basically now the output of this is piped into grep, right? Uh, grep will do its work, and then after that it will pipe all the results into tail, right? And then tail will do its part, right? Which is by default printing the last 10 lines. 6, 7, 9, 10, yeah. 7, 10 here, maybe just 9. Okay, so how does how does this exactly work, right? Basically, uh, when you launch, a, when you have a program, right? Uh, by default, there are three streams or files that are opened uh, or that are inherited by the program uh, from your shell, right? So they are called the standard input, uh, standard output, and standard error. Right, so by default, the standard input, output, and the error. By default, all three streams are the terminal. Right, uh, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, it says your keyboard here, but basically, all three, uh, all three streams are your terminal. Right, so whatever you key into the terminal will be read as input, and whatever you you um, whatever the program prints, uh, to either standard output or standard error will be. Uh, printed to the terminal, right? Um, yeah. So when you do pipe, what you're doing is you're redirecting the standard output of this uh, left program to the standard input of the right program, right? Right. So you can you can do redirections of streams. Okay, so this is the pipe syntax that we have seen, right? Uh, but there are other things that you can do. So for example, uh, I can write it to a file, right? Uh, journal CTL dash E, I pipe it to tail, right? Then I will, uh, then I will pipe the output of tail too. So I'm now, instead of the standard output, I'm redirect, sorry. So now the standard output of uh, this command, right? Instead of going to the terminal, I can redirect it to a file, right? So uh, log. Sorry, yeah. Now I can look at log. Right, and you can see that it is the, uh, you know, it's the output that I expected from here, right? See, it's in a file now. Okay, and okay, so one command that we haven't really mentioned is cat, right? So cat will just print the contents of any file uh, to, you know, your, your, your terminal, right? And then less is a pager, right? So if you want to view a long file, then you might want to use less so that you can scroll, right? Um, uh, right. If you if you use cat, you'll just print, you know, all of the file into to your terminal, and then you have to use your terminal scroll back to um to scroll, uh, and and that may be quite inconvenient, right? So less gives you some uh, 
nice uh, conveniences. For example, you can jump to lines and such, right? Uh, but that is out, outside the scope of today's uh, workshop, so you can go look up more about less uh, if or more, right? So the, there are two common pages in use called more and then less, right? So you can go and look uh, look those up. Nowadays, I think most of them default to less. Okay. Um, so we have seen how to redirect uh, standard uh, output, right? If you just put a two in front of the right carrot without a space in between, right? Then you will uh, redirect the standard error instead. Okay, and then if you want to redirect both, you can use this uh, ampersand uh, right carrot or ampersand greater uh, greater than, right? I don't know what you have to call it, yeah? Um, okay. Um, and then you can redirect the standard input as well. So for example, um, so now instead of uh, reading the standard uh, yeah, so now we can redirect the standard input of grep uh, to be read from the file, right? Uh, so basically, it will do the it will do the grep from uh, it will, it will grab the contents of the file and then print it to standard output, right? And then you can do multiple redirections at the same time. So for example, um, so now there won't be any output printed because uh, grep is printing its output to LO two. If you see LO2, you'll see that it's the output that we expect. So it's all the lines in uh, LO matching um, this, right? This pattern. And then we print, we redirect it to LO2. Okay. And you can also do this, for example, cat. Um, uh, Uh, hello. Oops. Okay, so you have a single word here. You can specify hello world, right? So what does this do, right? Basically this. Um, so, okay, first thing first, cat by default. When you run cat, you notice that it just does nothing, right? But what it's doing is actually reading from standard input and redirect and just printing whatever it receives to standard output, right? So now what we're doing is we are redirecting, uh, you know, we are making standard input of uh, this program to be uh, whatever you specify here, right? So you can specify anything here. Typically a variable, uh, right? Uh, so that's how you use this triple uh, left arrow. Right? So you're redirecting standard input to be uh, of this program to be the, uh, to be whatever, uh, whatever is here, right? Okay, finally, there is this uh, tool called T, right? So what does T do? It literally uh, duplicates the output, right? So for example, um, uh, for example, you want to like uh, T, uh, you, you have the output of some command A, right? And then you want to, uh, you want to redirect it to a file as well as redirect it to a different command B, right? So in this case, you can use T, right? And, and you notice why it's called T, la, because basically it's a T in a pipe, right? It's redirecting here and it's also redirecting this way. And you can write it to a file, right? Sorry. Yeah, so you can look up how to use the, the, the T command. Okay, let's move on. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is basically how you would manipulate the output of a command. You can filter, you know, uh, filter commands. So you can do things like, uh, what, I don't know. Um, can, there are a lot of utilities that you can use with this. For example, um, um, yeah, you can count lines, for example, see? Uh, so w WC is a utility that you can use to count uh, words, outlines etc right um, so you can pipe it WC and then you'll count the lines for you you know etc okay um, so then um, 
okay, I need to update this. This will not be covered in this uh, semester's uh, workshop series, but you can look at last semester's uh, data wrangling uh, workshop recording if you're interested, right? Um, we go through, like, we talk about how to use Grab, uh, how to use Awk, uh, things like that, and to how to, you know, basically work with data on the command, on the Linux command line. Okay? Okay. Um, okay, now, command grouping, right? Um, so sometimes you might want to redirect the output of multiple commands into a single command, right? Then what you can do is to use this uh, grouping, right? Uh, okay. So let's try the example. So A, go B, go C, right? So normally this will print uh, A, B, C, but if we group them together, uh, if we repipe them to tag, right? So tag, you notice, is cat in reverse, right? So what do you think as it prints? Uh, it just prints all the output that it receives in reverse, right? So now you see, instead of ABC, we get CBA. Okay, so that is just uh, command grouping. Okay. Um, okay, next thing is uh, process substitution, right? So what is this? What does this mean, right? Basically, sometimes you want to use the output of a program um, as the input of another program, but that program doesn't read the input from standard input. It reads input from um, a file name, right? Then in that case, what you can do is to use process substitution, right? So basically, it says here, run a, right? Generate a temporary file name for uh, the output and then pass that file name to substitute the file name in wherever it is, right? So we can look at how that works. So you see that it's basically, uh, you know, it generated a temporary file name. Actually, this is a pipe, right? Um, okay. So you see here that uh, there are multiple files that are created. Uh, and then this is passed to. The, the file name is substituted for in place of this right and then that is given to the program that you want to execute right so that lets you um, use the output of programs even in um, you know even in um, even with programs that don't accept input from standard input right um, okay so how might you use this for example you might want to use this with diff right because diff is a program that diff is a program that shows the differences between uh, two files, right? Uh, and you have to provide the file name. Uh, you know, you, you have to provide them in a file because you can't have two. Uh, you know, you, you can't have two like um, inputs in standard input, right? You only have one standard input, so you need to provide uh, at least one file as a separate file. So with process substitution, you can just do them uh, as a single. You know. Uh, yeah, you can do them in a single command instead of having to manually, you know, uh, create the files or anything, right? So we can try this. Okay. Uh, so what does this do? Basically, this compares the so this command, um, you don't really have to know what this does, but it just uh, prints the system log um, from D. <coughs> and then we are specifying B minus 1. This is the uh, previous uh, time I, I turned on my computer, right? Uh, and then B minus 2 is the two times ago that I turned on my computer, right? And then we are taking the first 20 lines of the log uh, from... Yeah, we're taking the first 20 lines of the log from that uh, output. Uh, from from this output, right, and then we want to uh, compare compare those two outputs and see the differences, right? Um, so in my case, uh, for some reason, all the lines are different. Oh, okay, obviously they're different because the timestamps are different, right? Um, yeah. So that's uh, an example of how we might use this command, right? Um, I think uh, process substitution, right? Um, I think it's commonly used with diff. Um, Actually, don't I don't don't use process substitution that often, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's useful to know. It can come in handy um, when you need it. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, let me quickly run through job and process control, right? Um, so just now uh, at the start, near the start, you saw that we can press control Z, right? Um, to put a command into the background, right? Um, so that is part of job control, right? Um, so you can actually, uh, the shell actually has pretty powerful uh, job control uh, mechanisms, right? So what you can do is, for example, you can run a command directly in the background. So for example, you can do this. Um, just an example. Right. And then you can see that now I have my prompt. I can do stuff, right? LS. But the command is still running in the background, right? And of course, the command can output to my terminal, right? Um, because the terminal, I mean, it, it, it has the terminal as the standard output. So um, if you don't want that, what you can do is Okay, so how do you bring this command to the foreground? You press F, you type FG, right? Um, now you see you don't have the prompt because uh, the command is in the foreground, right? So the shell is not, uh, the shell is not, uh, you know, uh, interpreting any input. So once you have the command in the foreground, you can press Control C to terminate the command, right? And uh, now instead of, um, you know, uh, Instead of uh, having it output to my terminal, I can output it to a hello. Oops. Okay, so you need to do this before the end. Right? So now you can see hello is being uh, written to, right? Every second. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is useful too. This ampersand is useful to run two uh, programs at the same time, right? So for example, um, uh, like a server and a client, for example. yeah. So you run the server at the same time and then you run the client uh, after you run the server, but the server is put in the background, right? Um, so sorry. an example would be this uh, netcat. Um, yeah, so netcat is a tool to just uh, send data over a network, right? Um, it can listen and it can uh, send, right? Uh, or connect, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's a useful tool. Uh, if you need to do a quick uh, file transfer uh, and for some reason you don't want to use like SFTP or whatever, right? You may be able to use netcat. Okay. And then, um, so you can use jobs, right? I used a command earlier. Right? You can use jobs to see all the commands that exist, right? Um, and then if you want to bring a command or, or a job to the foreground, right? You can use a percent one. You can use percent one to bring a job into the foreground, right? Um, and in general, you can use percent one in some places. For example, you can kill a particular job, right? Um, by doing that, kill percent one, right? You can use uh, FG um, jobs, right? Or, right. Um, sorry, what? Yeah. Okay, so now I have the job running again, right? Um, if you want to bring it to the foreground, right? Since there's only one job, you can just press F, you can just type FG, right? Uh, if you have multiple jobs, then you might have to specify the exact number that you want. Otherwise, you'll get the job that you last, uh, yeah, latest job that you uh, ran. Right. So now, um, if you want to, whatever program you have in the foreground, you can press Control Z, Control Z, right? And that will um, suspend it, right? Um, then if you want to, so now it's not running, right? If you want it to continue running in the background, you just press, you just type BG, background, right? Then it will continue in the background, right? Uh, then we have this special variable called um, uh, exclamation mark, right? Dollar bang, right? Uh, which is, um, which will have the PID of the last background process, right? So that may be useful um, in case you want to do something to that process later on. Okay, so now we can foreground the program again and then we can kill it. 
Okay, so this is uh, some job control in uh, Unix, right? Um, sorry, in, in the shell, right? So you can launch like background processors and then you can like have them continue working while you do other stuff, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so some commands for process control, right? Um, uh, won't really go through them because I don't think it's the objective of this workshop, right? Uh, but if you're interested, you can go and look um, look more into them. So you have PS, right? PS is a process that uh, PS is a tool that lists uh, processes, right? Basically, uh, so for example, PS. Uh, so you look at the processes in the current uh, shell session, right? If you do PS A, then you just list all processes, right? Um, then there's also like pgrep. So pgrep will grab through the processes and give you the PIDs of the processes that match, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, and then like uh, there's also kill, right? Uh, kill will send a signal to a process, right? Um, so um, if you don't know what a signal is, uh, not that important for this workshop, right? But um, yeah. It, Kill a uh, signal is an OS thing, so uh, it basically it tells a process to do something, right? So some common signals are the interrupt signal or sig int, right? Uh, that is what is sent to the process when you press Control C. So when you press Control C, uh, you know you will send a sig int or interrupt signal to the process, right? Um, and then you have a sig kill, right? So that is uh, kill dash. Uh, sorry, yeah, sig kill, uh, which is signal number nine. So you can send kill using dash uh, kill dash nine and that will just basically kill a program immediately right um, so you can control slash right uh, oh god dumped <laughs> interesting yeah so yeah sending it sending kill will kill the process immediately without giving it a chance to clean up right uh, because that is enforced by the os right so dash 9 will uh, is not really telling a process to do something you're immediately killing the process right um sig term or dash 15 signal number 15 is to tell a process to exit uh, gracefully right uh, so by default uh, the os will terminate the process but a process is able to catch a uh, sig term and then uh, you know clean up or uh, shut down gracefully la. Okay, this part is not uh, really uh, um, not exactly shell scripting, right? But um, it's useful to know uh, and it's related to uh, job controller. Hmm. Wonder why this is duplicated. Yeah. So in general, if you're trying to stop a process, you should use... Uh, you should use sick term, right, uh, rather than sick kill, uh, so that you are able to, uh, so that you let the process clean up um, after, you know, clean up its own resources and stuff. Lah. Okay. Um, so, yes, that is uh, basically it for shell scripting, right? Uh, we gave, uh, I gave a brief introduction to the shell and basically introduction to some shell syntax, uh, if, for, and while. Um, so there's still some more stuff you can look at, right? For example, case uh, statements or switch statements. Um, you know, um, until loops um, and uh, the various kinds of variable expansion you can do. Right. Um, so the bash manual is a very, a pretty well written, I think. Uh, I, I refer to it a lot. Uh, it's helpful to have it bookmarked. So whenever you're writing a shell script, uh, you can just refer to it. Um, there's also other resources here. Uh, you can check out if you're, uh, you have the slides, right? Okay. Um, there's some other utilities that uh, are useful so, so that you might want to check out. So for example, set is the stream editor, right? So basically that lets you do, for example, search and replace uh, on the output of a program uh, before you pipe it to a different program. Um, RG, right? Uh, rip grab, which is a grab like grab, but it's a, uh, I think it's uh more convenient uh in 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 the in its defaults right, um, and then there's also Starship right. So Starship is um way to customize your prompt. Um, so this is a prompt. So this is my normal prompt right. Um, 
in ZSH, right? And Starship lets you uh, customize that. La. So, um, for example, you can add things like based on your environment. For example, if you're in a Git repository, right? Uh, then you want might, maybe you want to show the current branch. Uh, so, so for example here, right? If you have a Git repository, then you can show the current branch uh, in your shell, uh, which is useful, right? Um, so you can do that with Starship, right? Uh, there are other ways to do it as well, uh, but um, what I use is Starship, okay? Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, okay, um, so I think the workshop, uh, I will end it here, right? Uh, uh, I'll end it proper here, right? Um, and uh, so if you have time, right, I will go through, I will continue going through the exercises, but uh, you can you can leave now uh, if you if you really have to. Um, but before you leave, please uh, check out, uh, please help us fill in the feedback form, right? Um, I'll send the link to the chat. Okay, uh, we appreciate if you help us to fill in the feedback form, right? Uh, tell us, uh, yeah, what you thought about today's workshop, right? Uh, next week workshop um, will be on Git, uh, also by me. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so thank you for coming down today. Um, if you have time, right, um, do stay around while I go through the exercises. Okay, uh, or some extras, right. Um, and we can uh, learn a bit more, right? Okay, so X arcs, or if you don't have time, you can always check out the recording, right? Okay, so what is X arcs? Uh, okay, so when you would use X arcs when, for example, you want to convert basically uh, output of a command into um, into arguments on the command line. So for example, let's say that we have this tool called file, right? So, so what does file do? It basically tells you the type of a file, right? For example, uh, if you file bin ls, then it'll tell you that, okay, uh, bin ls is executable, right? And tell you some details about the file. Um, you can do like, um, I don't know. Um, um, let's just pick a random, like, okay, okay. Yeah, so it tell you, it will tell you what's inside the file. So in this case, this file contains text, right? Um, so... So let's say you want to look at the types of the files in uh, in the current directory, like right? all the files in the current di in the current directory. So you might think, okay, let's use ls, right? So ls, you know, ls um, just gives me all the file names, right? And then I can pipe it to file. But then file gives me an error. And why is that? Because file is not expecting file names on standard input, right? So it's expecting a file name on the command line as a command line argument, right? Um, so you can't use, you can't do this directly, right? But what you can do is you can use X arcs, right? And what that will do is um, it will convert the arguments it receives on, uh, it will convert the, you know, things that it receives on standard input into um, arguments on the command line, right? And then that will work, okay. Um, now you see the trouble with XArcs, right? The reason we had this error, right, invalid option dash A is because we had a file called uh, dash A, right? Uh, and then when you do XArcs file, that actually becomes like, you can see if I do this. Right? You can see that it becomes dash A. So if you don't do anything to escape the um escape the comma, uh, sorry, like as make sure that this isn't treated as a uh, an option, right? It will be treated as an option, right? So you 
can get a bit um uh how to say that it's a pitfall right you you might run into if you have a file name that happens to start with a dash right so what is xarx doing you can see that it's basically converting uh you know whatever it receives on the standard input into arguments to whatever command you specify here right and then um but the same caveats of white space apply like you see here right okay so uh how do you get around this white space problem with x arcs right um basically there is a way to so certain commands support separating um, support separating output using null terminators right so ls doesn't but um does ls no it doesn't right so there are certain commands that support um terminating files using the uh sorry separating output using a null terminator right one of them is find right so find is basically um something that finds files right um, but if you don't specify so normally you will specify some criteria for example the file name or the size or something right but if you don't specify any criteria to find right then um, it will just list out all the files uh, you know in the um, under the current directory right recursively so what i'm gonna do is to so one operation you can provide to find is to print zero right what does this do it will print all the files but it will print them instead of separating using a space or a new line it will separate them using a null terminator right and then you can do uh, x arcs zero right echo right and then you can see that um okay so it, it uh it will provide you can't really see the difference here but this is now a single argument right so what we can do is to uh sorry uh well you can provide it to file right and you can see that it handles my documents correctly now yeah so um that is uh x arcs right and uh, find as well in zero so find is a very useful tool you can uh, i would recommend you look at you look it up in the man look up its manual page right, and you can see you know all the things you can do with find so for example i want to search for uh, files only you can do type f right Oh, sorry. Find, not file. See, so these are so it will then print out only the paths to files, right? Um, and then you can say like, okay, um, I only want to print files that contain L in the name, right? Then, um, then yeah, you can do that. So that's a complete example of like maybe you want to um, print the file type of all the um, you know all the files uh, under this current directory um, that contain f in the name right that this is how you might do it okay so that is x arcs right um, other exercises right so this syntax uh, I think the point of this exercise is this syntax right so we do a b a b right uh what do you expect from this you this will do a cartesian product right so you get a a b b a b b right um quite useful okay um and then uh, t right um yeah t I already mentioned earlier right uh, basically it will uh, duplicate the output right so for example we can try this example oh so you can see that hello is printed to um, standard output, but it's also saved into the file here, right? Versus if I do hello and then redirect it directly to standard output, then it's no, no longer printed to, sorry, I redirect it directly to the file, right? Then the, op, the, content, the output is no longer printed to um, the standard, um, no longer printed to standard output it only only redir redirected to the file right um so that is what t does right it's basically like a t pipe right that's why it's called t e e t okay and uh, lastly 
run echo hello yeah so what's the difference between one arrow and two arrows right so if i now cat hello.txt right you can see that hello.txt contains only one line of hello right and no matter how many times i do this uh, you know it will only contain one line of hello so what that, why does that happen basically when you use a single carrot um, you know single arrow symbol right it will uh, only uh, it, it will truncate the file before writing to it right it'll basically open the file in truncate mode that means that the file will be uh, empty and then after that the output will be written to it if you don't want to truncate and instead you want to append right you can use two arrows right and now you can see that you're appending to the file instead of truncating it right so that's the difference between uh, single arrow and a double arrow okay um, so we have uh, completed for real now so um, the I think like nine nine no how many of us uh, eight people that stayed uh, thank you um, and uh, yeah I uh, hope that this workshop has been useful for you uh, again uh, would appreciate we will appreciate any feedback um, yeah, please fill in the feedback form and we will appreciate any feedback and uh, yeah uh, hopefully you will be able to write uh, shell scripts after this uh, with more confidence yeah and uh, if you want to learn about git do come down to next week's uh, workshop uh, also taught by me right um, yeah where I'll be intro uh, introducing git um, on the command line yeah um so thank you. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask, right? Um.